Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome back to another tutorial and today this video is on how to get your bio set up for your Hackintosh. I have made a video on this previously like a year ago but now we have new motherboards with new chipsets and there are a lot of new settings that we need to learn. So there are many new things that the manufacturer gave in their new motherboard chipsets of Z170 or H170 or B170 or Z270 and Z270X Gaming 5 and lots of different things have been updated from different manufacturers including Gigabyte and Aces and MSI and ASRock and there are tons of things you have to go through if you want to get your Hackintosh set up. So for setting up the Hackintosh you have to select few of the things out of so many different things they gave you in the new motherboards. So the first thing is that you can upgrade to the latest motherboard version. Right now I'm using the F8 you can go to the F9 or if you're using a Z170 series I think they are up with F21 or F20 uh, motherboard BIOSes. So you can update to the latest version and then you have to do the settings I tell you to do. So let's start with the settings. So right now you can see my motherboard is Z270X Gaming 5 and we will go directly into the BIOS and here you have to set a couple of different things. The first thing is that you have to get your Apple boot drive or you can say hi Sarah boot drive at the top of the boot options priorities by doing this every time you will you will restart your system you will directly boot into your Mac OS X or into your Clover bootloader instead of booting into Windows or into another Unix or Linux operating system so by this your default uh, operating system will be the Clover or and that means your default operating system will be hi Sarah or Sarah or any Mac OS X version. So let's go down and in hard drive priorities you can also select your main drive which is the Apple drive or you can say high server drive and here you can see I have like five different hard drives connected to my system but I have disabled them because that will save the time to boot up. So if you enable all of your drive in the boot option priorities then won't give any benefit to you but it will lead to a decrease in time of the booting of the system because your BIOS have to search through all of the hard drive and then it will try to boot from it. But if you select just one or two then the BIOS will skip all the other hard drives and it will directly go to the two selected drives and that will increase your booting time. Now let's go in down here and in here you will find Windows 8 and 10 features. Just select other OS from this. Now go down and LAN PXE boot option ROM, disable it. In storage boot options control, you select UEFI. In other PCI devices, select UEFI. And other PCI devices, basically, if you're using a graphic card which is of GTX 900 series and above, and of the AMD 500 and 400 series or from GTX 1000 series you can select UEFI but you can try this on other older graphic card as well but that is dependent on your graphic card basically so let's go to the peripherals now and here I have selected the initial display output to PCI 1 slot which means my Nvidia GTX 970 graphic card and if you're using Intel graphic card then you have to use IGFX graphic card in here onboard LAN card controller I have said enabled and here e easy raid i don't use a as raid because the drivers are not available in mac os high sarah sarah or any other version and then here we go down and intel platform trust technology i don't use this and that's basically not needed if you're using a hackintosh then sw guard extension and i used the software control instead of hardware or enable and then this is the USB setting you can choose dependent on your needs then we go off board SATA controller configuration and that's not available right now because I don't use any PCI trusted computing I have selected enable Intel or BIOS guard technology I have disabled network star configuration I have disabled NVMe I don't use any NVMe drive USB configuration so here I use legacy USB sport enabled XHCI hands off enable USB mass storage driver enable port 6064 emulation enable now let's go into SATA and RST configuration here I use SATA controllers enabled and I use SATA mode selection as AHCI instead of Intel Octane because I don't use that and if you're using Z170 or Z 
87 or 97 or any of the older version then Intel RST Premium with Intel Optane System Acceleration will not be available there. There will be RAID or AHCI or IDE. So this is the Z200 series or H200 series motherboard thingy. So in aggressive low power mode or low power management support, I used enable that saves the electricity and put your hard drive to the lowest possible state to save the maximum energy. Then here, I don't use VT or virtualization technology D, I use disable. I don't use internal graphics for the Intel CPU and I use disable. If you're using Intel CPU for the graphics output, by which I mean if you're using Intel graphics, HD 4000, HD 500, 600 or anything, then you have to use internal graphics and then you have to select the maximum available graphic storage as well. For audio controller, I use enable and for PHC, PCH LAN controller enable wake on LAN enable high precision timer enable IO APIC 24119 entries enabled in power management I use platform power management system PEG PE PCH DMI all of these fours are enabled and then these are dependent on your selection but here RC6 render standby I use this as enable and uh, let's go back and in here MIT I have overclocked my system to you can see it's overclocked to 4.6 and the normal base clock is 3. Point, normal turbo boost clock is 3.8 and normal base clock is 3.4 but I'm using 4.6 and that's overclocked I use the automatic overclocking and I use extreme memory profile on my RAMs as well so they are clocked to 3200 MHz and uh, in advanced memory controller everything is stable and I want to select memory enhanced to enhance stability that helps system not to crash in rough case scenarios and uh, on your motherboards this is the BIOS settings you have to do on your motherboard that motherboard can be of any manufacturing company and but it has to be from Z170 to H270 and even including the X99 as well as X299 or X299. So these settings are for the latest motherboards and you can select different variety of options but the basic one, the one I told you to select, you have to select these settings to get the best result for your Hackintosh stability and performance. And that's all for this video guys. I hope you liked it, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope this video helped you out. And if you have any question, query, please feel free to ask in the comment section below and please like, share and subscribe and share this video to all of your friends and family who want to learn about Hackintosh. And if you really like the video then give thumbs up to it and help me on the Patreon as well. So helping me on Patreon give a boost to my performance and then I can make a lot of videos in a small time period. That's it and thanks again. Thanks for watching and until the very next video please take care. Allah Hafiz.